Hey guys, and welcome back to Cozy Tea. This is Rob. Thank you so much for tuning in to my YouTube channel. I appreciate you so much for being here. It, it's just awesome that there are people who watch my videos. So thank you for, for watching. I haven't made a video for about two weeks. Um, Thanksgiving happened, although I didn't do anything. Still took the day off because why not? But we also had COVID in the household. There's only two of us here, but it was here. Um, fortunately, nothing extraordinary happened. It was quite underwhelming, but I know for other people it's been the opposite of that, and my heart always will go out to those people. Um, but we are fine, so thank goodness. But yeah, I am excited to be back making videos again, and yeah, let's get started. Go on and get yourself a cup of tea and a snack, cozy up in your most cozy spot, and let's talk about some art stuff. In today's painting, I will be painting two Nemos and an anemone. I'm not gonna do that weird thing that other people do where they try to say it a million times. I just said it, it's been said, that's how you say it, and if it's not, I don't care because I said it. So, we're gonna move forward now with life. It's a painting I didn't think I would do. It's different, it's underwater, it's fish. I have never been one for what's in the ocean. I think the ocean is absolutely terrifying, especially since we know more about space than we do the bottom of our own oceans. If, if there is something alive at the bottom of the ocean, it has to be fucking huge. I mean, monstrous, right? Because the weight of the water is bearing on top of your entire body. You have to be the biggest thing that's ever existed. I don't want to know what that is. But the opposite of that, if there's absolutely nothing down there, that's even equally as terrifying because the water and the darkness and the cold is so bad that there's just no life. The ocean doesn't really excite me that much, but sometimes there's some cool, interesting things. And I thought this reference photo I found of uh, these two fish was kind of a unique challenge. I'm pretty excited with how it turned out too. I think the anemone really added an interesting flair to the painting because it's such a random organism. It doesn't really have a form, it just kind of flows in the water. So I was kind of nervous about the placement of those little, I don't know, tentacles, whatever you call them. <laughs> Maybe I should have done my research before recording, but um, I didn't want to just fill up the entire page with them because in the reference photo there was actually a lot of those little tentacle things. I just wanted to add enough that it got the message across, but not too much that it looked overcrowded. And then for the background, I just wanted to keep it simple, and I think that's really my art style. I want the focus to be what's in the center, so I want you to see the anemone, I want you to see the two clownfish. Um, I don't want you know there to be so much going on, and I'm also not trying to do hyper-realism, it's just... People can take pictures of those things. I, I can totally respect someone who is capable of capturing the entire likeness of something that is ex extremely skilled thing to be able to do and it's so awesome. But for me, I wanna take the most important things of all of that and then accent it with an interesting background of color. I think that just really encompasses what my brand and what Cozy Tea stands for. I will say if I could go back and change something, the Nemo in the middle, the, the big one who's like staring down at the world, at, towards the end of the video you'll see, his eyeball looks like he's suspiciously looking at something, almost like that gopher meme where it turns around and is like, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> I I don't like that, but he, he's he's looking for something. He's, he's seen something and he's about to ask a question and that's fine. You know what? The painting has personality. He decided to step up and he was like, look, I know you painted me, but I have questions. So I'm just glad he can't ask them. So that is that for the painting. I hope you guys like it. If you have any questions about art supplies or um, what I use, I will put that all in the description below. So there's that. And you can always comment if you have any questions or input. So that is that. For the rest of the video, I'm going to be talking about fear and how it is uh, such a massive part of the creative process, and I just feel like it's a relevant topic in general considering the year that we've had. So let's get into fear. What is fear? Fear is a feeling of dread. It's a feeling of, oh shit, 
let's get an actual definition. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. What is the definition of fear? As a noun it means, an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain, or a threat. Thank you Siri. So, this is like a really interesting definition here, um, the actual definition of the word fear. And, and it makes me ask the question, why is it such an integral part of the creative process? Because in reality, art is not terrifying necessarily. The creation of it is not relatively threatening to anyone, um, unless you're like consuming art products and like digesting them, I don't imagine it's really that dangerous. Or maybe you're impaling people with paintbrushes. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get into people's hobby choices, but I hope you're not doing that. There's nothing dangerous about art. So why do we fear it so much? It's an interesting question. I think personally, there's an element of fear in creation simply out of what if it doesn't turn out well, or what if it ends up being a waste of time. With the world the way it is, I know I talked about this in my video where I talked about cynicism, but there's just maybe not a whole lot of support for the arts, especially in a world right now where we're talking a lot about medicine and medical practice, and there's also a lot of legal stuff going on in the world, so is there really time for art? Are people who are so busy hustling and bustling going to stop for five seconds and take a look at what you've created? And if they do, are they going to be happy with it? Are they going to be happy that they took that five seconds? Or are they going to be pissed and walk away and say, I can't believe that I stopped for five seconds to see that shit. <laughs> what are they going to say? I know for me personally, as much as I like to boast about, I don't care what people think. I do. I care what people think about me and, and Cozy Tea. I, I care about this brand. I care about what I'm trying to create here. And I want my art to say something. I want it to be of quality. I know I'm not the best artist out there, but that's not necessarily my goal. My goal is to improve my skill and create what I want to create and grow my art style to what it is meant to become. Some of the greatest artists in the world did things that technically were not, you know, what they were supposed to do. You know, we look back at Rembrandt today with such inspiration for how rebellious he was with his paint strokes and the techniques that he used, but at the time, people were not about what he did. So it's just what we're trying to say. And sometimes that message isn't necessarily perceived by others as what they want or what is typical of the times. And that's what art should be. It should be your voice. As I've said before in previous videos, it should be the message that you want to provide the world. And it's the world's job to sit down and listen to what it is that you're saying, not judge it and try to change it. But even when you are perceived well, there's still a lot of fear in the creation process. There's fear of rejection, there's fear of disappointment, there's fear of not delivering on time, there's fear of what people might do, especially with this online culture. We have cancel culture, we have um, outrage culture, we have the mob mentality where people just gang up on people's you know, social medias and they set the whole thing on fire. And there's a lot to be scared of when it comes to that. You know, I think it was either my second or third video where I talked about political correctness. If I'm ever blessed to have a big platform, I don't imagine that that video is going to, I don't think it's gonna age well. I'm gonna keep it up though, because it's my opinion and I stand by it, but I think there's gonna be a lot of people who disagree with it. I think art and fear are intertwined because art is who we are. You are exposing yourself. I am sharing what I genuinely love about life with the world when I make these videos, and there is a part of my heart that I am putting out on the table for anyone to do what they will with it. Someone could come into one of my videos and just tear my soul into pieces. Other people could come in and inspire me to create more. It hurts when people don't like what you enjoy or what you're trying to share. Imagine putting hours and hours into a piece and everyone hates it. <laughs> it it's like just getting your arm cut off in public. It, it hurts and that part of you, that pain that you might feel, because we've all been there, we want to not ever go there again and that's why we practice, that's why we keep doing it so we can create and continue to get better. But we are going to make mistakes and they are going to be perceived as 
not good and people may you know for lack of a better term take a piss on it so it's just a part of the journey itself i think fear is always going to be a part of the creative process and i've seen some videos online where people talk about conquering fear or they talk about the opposite embracing fear and it's kind of like which one should you do i personally think it's probably more of a balance between the two ideas um, to conquer fear would be to completely disacknowledge what matters in your life, what means something to you. If you don't fear losing what you care about or fear it being perceived badly, then what's the purpose? What's the energy that is pushing you to create more? I'm scared of not creating videos because I know it's what I want to do. And if I don't do that, I'm scared that I'm going to look back and regret it. I fear the day that I regret I didn't do the thing that I wanted to do. If I conquer my fear, then that purpose is not there. That ambition, that drive to create, it's killed. But if I fully embrace fear, then I'm allowing myself to be completely scared and say, what if it doesn't work out? What if people don't like my videos? What if I make a big oopsie? I'm just not gonna do it because I'm embracing this fear. Now that can be maybe a matter of interpretation, maybe embracing fear has a different meaning to other people, but to me, it is accepting that you're scared of something and allowing it to have influence over your actions. You should allow yourself to conquer enough of the fear that you do things that you're scared of, but accept the fact that fear is there and it's okay. The fear of not creating online content, the fear of not painting and posting it on the internet is much greater than the fear of me doing it and whatever could come of that. Whatever negativity could come from me doing this does not overpower the fear of not creating in general. And I think this is what gets us caught up in a loop that we end up scared sometimes to create, which then also gives us fear of not creating and that cycle feeds into itself where we end up just sitting in a room staring at our art supplies and not doing anything. And I've been there before, I'm sure a lot of us have been there before, but fear is just as important as anxiety, in my opinion. You know, I have two anxiety disorders myself, and it, it can get a little out of hand, but for the normal average person, anxiety is, you know, it's, it's an itch. It's like, hey, I really need to do this thing, and I'm anxious until I do it, um, or I'm overly cautious of my surroundings, and it, I'm feeling this way because something doesn't feel right. Like, it's our instinct kicking in. And fear is also a part of our instinct, so to completely conquer it would be to completely null and void our very natural essence, but to let it completely control us will dull and numb all of our other instincts. So there are just parts of life that are uncomfortable, and I believe in an era of luxury. You know, I, I heard somewhere that most people live better than some French king, was it King Francis or something? Most of us live better than King Edward, whoever. Our lives are pretty decent. You know, most of us have cell phones and we have technology and we have shelter and we can DoorDash food if we are hungry. There's a lot of convenience now and everything's pretty easy to get our hands on if, you know, you have the means to, to get those things. But ultimately it's kind of made everyone a little bit softer. It's maybe an unpopular opinion, but has made things a little bit too easy to the point where we're scared to step out of our comfort zone. We're scared to not be comfortable. And unfortunately, discomfort is a major part of life. It it very much is. I've had some, some dark times in, in my 27 years, and there are just points in life that suck, and you just kind of have to get through them. I think allowing yourself to acknowledge the fact that you're scared of something is very strong of you but to continue to do something regardless of that fear is even more powerful of you. You should conquer your fear enough to say, I'm not gonna let you stop me, but acknowledge it enough that it motivates you to move forward. And obviously there's you know, some outlier situations like you know, chronic depression or other mental anguish. And obviously if that is something that plagues you, um, just for the record, you, you absolutely matter. and are loved and it's okay that you don't feel okay but maybe it, it might be important to reach out and seek some help I've been there myself so I, I can vouch for it. it it's hard but it does absolutely get better it, it does get better
but that still falls under, you know, this whole conquering fear aspect. Fear is here, and we're always going to be scared of something. There are things that are scary, like a serial killer or a lion chasing us, but these things are not as common as the fear of creating or the fear of pursuing that job application or talking to your boss about getting a raise or whatever it is that you're looking forward to in your life. We have to conquer enough of our fear to be strong, but acknowledge the fact that it is scary, and that is okay. It's okay. It's going to be fine one way or another. <laughs> but yeah, that is this video, guys. I hope that this was an interesting topic. I really had to dig into my brain to talk about this because I didn't want to come off offensive or anything, but fear is a part of life, and we should accept that it, it just is here. It, it is the elephant in the room, and it's not going anywhere. But that's fine, too. It's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. With all of that said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, go on and hit the like button, leave a comment, um, let me know what you think, and thank you once again for watching my YouTube videos. I appreciate your guys' time and I appreciate you being here. It really means a lot to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Keep it real, and remember, stay cozy, stay you, stay beautiful. No matter what, your foundation is strong and it's been holding you up this long. It'll hold you up even longer. Just believe in yourself and keep your head up, guys. I appreciate you being here and I will see you in the next video. Peace.